the revolution will be live. As we've reported, a record number of white nationalists are currently running for state and national office, and exclusively as Republicans, putting party officials on the defensive going into this year's midterm elections. Nowhere is this more true than here in Virginia, where Senate candidate Corey Stewart an ardent supporter of President Trump has made uh, preservation of Confederate monuments on public lands a centerpiece of his campaign. That and an ideological solidarity with the alt-right that has made him a darling of white supremacists, including the very architects of the rally that made Charlottesville a shorthand for racial violence one year ago today. Joining me now is Republican candidate for Virginia Senate, Corey Stewart. Thank you for being here, Mr. Stewart. Let me ask you, do you consider yourself a candidate, the candidate for white nationalists in the state of Virginia? No, of course not, uh, Reverend. And here's the thing, is that uh, I know you brought me on your show because you want to talk about the one-year anniversary of the horrible events in Charlottesville last year. But, you know, I meet with voters every single day, the residents of Virginia, and there's one thing that's very, very clear, and that is people are sick and tired of talking about race all the time. Uh, they're tired of it. They want to move on. The people of Charlottesville want to move on. The people of Virginia want to move on. They have a lot more important issues to talk about uh, than race on a constant basis, which is what we get out of you and the rest of the media on a daily basis. Well, but it's very difficult if you live in a society where your job, your education, the, your safety is determined by your race, not to talk about your reality. Let me say, for example, and, and there are many blacks that live in the state of Virginia, and they have to deal with the uh, reality of race. They don't have the option that you're talking about. Let me, let me give you an example. You've taken some heat this week for remarks you made last year at an event hosted by secessionists known to have white supremacist ties. I want to play part of those remarks and explain to me how you can say what you're saying now when you said this a year ago in April when you were running for governor. This is the state of George Washington and Thomas Jefferson and James Madison and James Monroe. It's the state of the founders. It's the state of the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution, but it's also the state of Robert E. Lee and Stonewall Jackson and J.E.B. Stewart. Yeah, no. Because at the base of it, Virginians, we think for ourselves. Yeah. And if the established order is wrong, we rebel. Amen. We did that in the Revolution. We did it in the Civil War. And we're doing it today. We did it during the Civil War. This is a history of a state of Robert E. Lee and Stonewall Jackson. That's what you said a year ago. That's you talking, running for governor. Now you say today we want to get past race after you talked about how we should praise and erect people whose only role in history was to uphold slavery and commit treason against the United States. You know, why is it that you on the left are so obsessed with what happened 150 years ago? You know, my, no, no, I'm, I'm, running I'm for talking United about States. you, Alaska. You have me on your show so that I can speak. I'm talking presume, about Reverend, Corey right? Stewart running for yeah. governor last year. That's what you said. You went back so 150 years ago. You're always when looking you made back to the past. I'm talking about what you said. Explain yeah. to me your statements in light of what you're saying now. Reverend, let me just explain this. People don't okay. care about what happened 150 years ago. Historians love this stuff, and I love history, but at the end of the day, we need to look at what the problems are today. And you mentioned that it was only uh, people of a certain race who were facing these challenges with their education, their health care, their jobs, everything else. That's just simply not true. There are Americans of every single race, of every single religion, of every single ethnicity that are struggling with the same things. And as long as we continue to divide Americans by race, and you've made a 
career out of dividing people by race. You've been a race hustler your entire career. You've made a lot of money at it. You haven't even bothered to pay your taxes How, well, at well, it. Well, and all you here, do is divide all, Americans by all, race. First and frankly, all, people Mr. are Stewart, tired of it. Mr. Stewart, I'm not going, I'm not going for debate. This is not about me. <laughs> Everybody knows I've not made. And neither I'm not am I. Made I'm and not going to defend I. myself standing up for racial justice. I'm going to give you an opportunity again to defend your statements, defending and praising Robert E. Lee and Stonewall Jackson, not 150 years ago, a year ago. You're running for Senate now. I'm asking you about what you said a year ago. You can call me whatever name you want. That's fine. You are saying that you're running for Senate. You are saying that we shouldn't go back 150 years. You went back 150 years a year ago. Explain to me your statement. Your feelings about me, believe me, is not something that I'm going to worry about the rest of the day. Well, I want good. You to I'm glad you to feel me, that way. And I want you to explain to the citizens of Virginia how you could praise Stonewall Jackson and Robert E. Lee and offer yourself to all the citizens of the state. Explain. Let, let me explain this, is that Virginians, you know, I wasn't even born in Virginia, but I've always loved Virginia because Virginians have, a, they have a, a, the heart of a warrior. They have the, and they have the heart of a rebel. This is a great state. It's, it is a state of the revolution. And yes, it was a state of the Civil War and so forth. But what I love about the state is the fact that people are willing to stand up, and when they know that something is wrong, they're willing to go forward and they're willing to change it. That's the great thing about Virginia. And we've got a lot of problems. And, you know, when, when people start talking about slavery from 150 years ago, we have to understand, we have modern-day slavery going on in the United States today in terms of sex trafficking. And that's all fed because we have an open border. And nobody on the left is willing to do anything about that. They're willing to turn a blind Will eye to the problems we're having statements. today rather than it, you, the slavery no, no from 150 one, no one would argue years with you. ago. You're absolutely right. We should be against sex trafficking. You're absolutely right about issues of today. But you were the one that praised people whose only historic significance was they supported slavery and succession. How do you fight what you claim? or slavery issues of today and praise and defend statues for people whose only place in history is they fought and killed American Union soldiers to defend slaveries of yesterday. So what makes it relevant today is you, because you praised it. You, you support erecting statues that we have to pay for the ground uh, of protection and the servicing of those statues today. You make it relevant, Mr. Stewart. You know, I love history, but at the end of the day, that's not what people want us here for. I, I love our history. I love the, the history of Virginia. It's the history of America. You can't change it. That's the way it is. And these monuments were erected because people wanted to remember those. In many cases, they had their 15 or 16-year-old sons who died in the war, and they wanted to remember those. And I just thought it was wrong to be removing historical monuments for, that were placed there by prior generations. We need to be focused instead on the problems that we're facing today and the challenges that we're facing today, regardless of race, because people are so tired, Reverend. I'm telling you this because I speak to people every day of, of all races, of all ethnicities, and I've, governed, I've been governing for 10 years, one of the largest, most successful, one of the most diverse localities in the entire country. And I've been elected and reelected four times because people know I know how to fix problems, I know how to focus in on problems, and not focus in on things like race that simply divide people, something that you've been doing your entire but, career. But you, you know, you, you, you made a very uh, serious appeal saying that there are differences in school and education and other things in the state, which is clear. But there are those that those differences is because of their race. Is, is the only reason they have not been able to move in certain ways economically, educationally, is because of race. So you can't eliminate race when that is the basis of it, just like you can if it's based on gender or if it's based on sexual orientation. And you can call people hustlers and all the names that you want. You can't get around that if you are offering yourself to the Senate, you've got to deal with the issues. Just name calling is a cheap way around saying, I am not either able are willing to address the issues. There is still a racial inequality and a gender inequality in this country.
Can you deal with it? And if you can, how do you then hold up those and say that Virginia taxpayers should pay to upkeep the grounds of people that fought to keep people in slavery, even if it was your grandfather, great-grandfather, they were fighting to keep enslaved. How do you rationalize it? And I know your temptation, attack Al Sharpton, and you came on the show, you beat up Al Sharpton to get your base up. I got that. But I think <laughs> I'm giving you the opportunity to be a little bigger than that. Discuss the issue. How do you justify that? How do you rationalize that? Well, I think fundamentally, Reverend, uh, the problems that we have in this country are not due to race. The problems that we have in this country are, you know, people with regard to education or health care, uh, and the problems with, with, that we have with illegal immigration, uh, people coming across the border without any screening whatsoever, and a lot of them have criminal backgrounds, they're committing crimes America, against American citizens, and they're committing crimes against American citizens of all races, of all ethnicities, of all religions. Uh, and the fact of the matter is that most of our problems in this country are not due to race and they can't be solved by focusing on race. You, you have to address the issues Do you the believe there's racism and, left in the country? Do you believe there's any racism at all in the country? Of, of course there is. Of course there's some. And, and, so but what I do, do you think, think we that, ought to do about it? Do you think by erecting Confederate statues and keeping them solves the problem? I mean, what do you think we ought to do about the racism that you just said, yes, exists in the country? Well, first of all, nobody's erecting Confederate monuments today. What's happening is you got the left maintaining them. Well, you got the left that's trying to take them down. And as far as yes. I can tell, taking down a Confederate monument has never educated a single child. It's never provided health care insurance for a single person in this country. It's never built a road. It's never solved or created a single job. And that's why the left keeps doing these things like deliberately trying to divide Americans by race. And as long as you no, all you know, keep doing but that, you know what it does? we're never going to it be able to address to, the problems that we have. It explains to young children, black and white, why we ought not to have racism, why we ought not have slavery. Because when they see those statues taken down and say, mommy or teacher, why? It's because those people represented treason from the United States that you're trying to go to the Senate to represent. And you say they're racism, but you keep, when I ask you, how do we deal with it? You talk about people coming over the border. I'm talking about people that were brought here to the border against their will and built the country. And you are saying, let's maintain those that enslaved them. And I wanted to give you an opportunity even though I knew you'd go where you went to, to clarify, because, yeah, I've talked to some people in, in uh, Virginia, and they said, you don't understand Corey Stewart is more than that. I wanted to see, but I let the nation also see while I watched how you reacted. And I thank you for coming on. I really no, do. Thank you, Reverend. I appreciate Corey that. Stewart.